Hello and welcome to day 182 of our Bible in a Year Challenge. My name is Sandra. I'm going to be your host for today. Welcome. We are committed to reading and fellowshipping with God's Word every single day of this year, 2024. Please kindly go ahead right now, subscribe to my YouTube channel, follow me on Facebook, on Instagram, and on TikTok at Sandra Boyo Areleba. Let's get started. Let us say a word of prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, as we mark the midpoint of our year through your sacred text, we come to you with hearts full of thanksgiving and minds eager for more of your wisdom. On this 182nd day, we reflect on the journey so far and we anticipate the depths yet to explore in your word. Lord, we ask that your Holy Spirit guide us as we read today. Illuminate our understanding, open our eyes to see new truths, and deepen our appreciation for the treasures within your scriptures. Help us to connect your ancient words to our daily lives, finding relevance and solace in your promises and commands. We pray for discernment to grasp the full meaning of the text, and the courage to apply your teachings to our actions. May your word continue to be a lamp to our feet and a light to our path, guiding us in righteousness. Encourage us, Lord, as we commit to the second half of this journey. Renew our zeal for studying your word and strengthen our resolve to follow you more closely. May our study today not only enrich our knowledge, but also transform our character, making us more like Jesus in every aspect of our lives. We thank you for the gift of your word, for the wisdom it imparts, and for the lives of believers with whom we share this journey. Bless our reading today, and may it bear fruit in our lives and in the lives of those we encounter. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Welcome to the second half of the year. Welcome to day 182, July 1st, 2024. Happy new month of July. 365 days Bible reading, Old Testament, 2 Kings 3, 2 Kings 4, 1 to 37. New Testament, Acts 21, 1 to 26. Psalms and Proverbs, Psalm 78, 56 to 72. Old Testament NIV version, 2 Kings 3, 1 to 27. Moab revolts. Joram, son of Ahab, became king of Israel in Samaria in the 18th year of Jehoshaphat, king of Judah. And he reigned 12 years. He did evil in the eyes of the Lord, but not as his father and mother had done. He got rid of the sacred stone of Baal that his father had made. Nevertheless, he clung to the sins of Jeroboam, son of Nebath, which he had caused Israel to commit. He did not turn away from them. Now Mesha, king of Moab, raised sheep, and he had to pay the king of Israel a tribute of a hundred thousand lambs and the wool of a hundred thousand rams. But after Ahab died, the king of Moab rebelled against the king of Israel. So at that time, King Joram set out from Samaria and mobilized all Israel. He also sent this message to Jehoshaphat, king of Judah. The king of Moab has rebelled against me. Will you go with me to fight against Moab? I will go with you, he replied. I am as you are, my people as your people, my horses as your horses. By what route shall we take, he asked. Through the desert of Edom, he answered. So the king of Israel set out with the king of Judah and the king of Edom. After a roundabout march of seven days, the army had no more water for themselves or for the animals with them. What? exclaimed the king of Israel. Has the Lord called us three kings together only to deliver us into the hands of Moab? But Jehoshaphat asked, Is there no prophet of the Lord here? through whom we may inquire of the Lord. An officer of the king of Israel answered, Elisha, son of Shaphat, is here. He used to pour water on the hands of Elijah. Jehoshaphat said, The word of the Lord is with him. 
So the king of Israel and Jehoshaphat and the king of Edom went down to him. Elisha said to the king of Israel, Why do you want to involve me? Go to the prophets of your father and the prophets of your mother. No, the king of Israel answered, because it was the Lord who called us three kings together to deliver us into the hands of Moab. Elisha said, As surely as the Lord Almighty lives whom I serve, if I did not have the respect for the presence of Jehoshaphat, king of Judah, I would not pay any attention to you. But now bring me a harpist. While the harpist was playing, the hand of the Lord came on Elisha and he said, This is what the Lord says. I will fill this valley with pools of water, for this is what the Lord says, you will see neither wind nor rain, yet this valley will be filled with water, and you, your cattle and your other animals will drink. This is an easy thing in the eyes of the Lord, he will also deliver Moab into your hands. You will overthrow every fortified city and every major town. You will cut down every good tree, stop all the springs and ruin every good field with stones the next morning about the time for offering the sacrifice there it was water flowing from the direction of edom and the land was filled with water now all the moabites had heard that the kings had come to fight against them so every man young and old who could bear arms was called up and stationed on the border when they got up early in the morning, the sun was shining on the water. To the Moabites across the water, the water looked red like blood. That is blood, they said. Those kings must have fought and slaughtered each other, now to the plunder Moab. But when the Moabites came to the camp of Israel, the Israelites rose up and fought them until they fled. And the Israelites invaded the land and slaughtered the Moabites. They destroyed the towns and each man threw a stone on every good field until it was covered. They stopped up all the springs and cut down every good tree. Only Kir, Hareseth, was left with its stones in place, but men armed with slings surrounded it and attacked it. When the king of Moab saw that the battle had gone against him, he took with him 700 swordsmen to break through to the king of Edom, but they failed. Then he took his firstborn son, who was to succeed him as king, and offered him as a sacrifice on the city wall. The fury against Israel was great. They withdrew and returned to their own land. Second Kings 4, 1-37 The Widow's Olive Oil The wife of a man from the company of the prophets cried out to Elisha, Your servant, my husband, is dead, and you know that he revered the Lord. But now his creditor is coming to take my two boys as his slaves. Elisha replied to her, How can I help you? Tell me, what do you have in your house? Your servant has nothing there at all, she said, except a small jar of olive oil. Elisha said, Go around and ask all your neighbors for empty jars. Don't ask for just a few. Then go inside and shut the door behind you and your sons. Pour oil into all the jars, and as each is filled, put it to one side. So, she left him and shut the door behind her and her sons. They brought the jars to her, and she kept pouring. When all the jars were full, she said to her son, Bring me another one. But he replied, There is not a jar left. Then the oil stopped flowing. She went and told the man of God, and he said, Go. Sell the oil and pay your debts. You and your sons can live on what is left. Hallelujah. The Shunammite's son restored to life. One day, Elisha went to Shunem, and a well-to-do woman was there who urged him to stay for a meal. So, whenever he came by, he stopped there to eat. She said to her husband, I know that this man who often comes our way is a holy man of God. Let us make a small room on the roof and put it, put in it a bed and a table, a chair and a lamp for him. Then he can stay there whenever he comes to us. One day when Elisha came, he went up to his room and lay down there. He said to his servant Gehazi, call the Shunammite. So he called her and she stood before him. 
Elisha said to him, Tell her you have gone to all this trouble for us. Now what can be done for you? Can we speak on your behalf to the king or the commander of the army? She replied, I have a home among my own people. What can be done for her? Elisha asked. Gehazi said, She has no son and her husband is old. Then Elisha said, Call her. So he called her and she stood in the doorway. About this time next year, Elisha said, You will hold a son in your arms. No, my lord, she objected. Please, man of God, don't mislead your servant. But the woman became pregnant and the next year, about that same time, she gave birth to a son. Just as Elisha had told her, the child grew and one day he went out to his father who was with the reapers. He said to his father, my head, my head. His father told the servant, carry him to his mother. After the servant had lifted him up and carried him to his mother, the boy sat on her lap until noon and then he died. She went up and laid him on the bed of the man of God, then shut the door and went out. She called her husband and said, please send me one of your servants and a donkey so I can go to the man of God quickly and return. Why go to him today? He asked. It's not the new moon or the Sabbath. That's all right, she said. She saddled the donkey and said to her servant, Lead on, don't slow down for me unless I tell you. So she set out and came to the man of God at Mount Carmel. When he saw her in the distance, the man of God said to his servant Gehazi, Look, there is the Shunammite. Run to meet her and ask her, Are you all right? Is your husband all right? Is your child all right? Everything is all right, she said. When she reached the man of God at the mountain, she took hold of his feet. Gehazi came over to push her away, but the man of God said, Leave her alone. She is in bitter distress, but the Lord has hidden it from me and has not told me why. Did I ask you for a son, my Lord? she said. Didn't I tell you, don't raise my hopes? Elijah said to Gehazi, Tuck your cloak into your belt take my staff in your hand and run don't greet anyone you meet and if anyone greets you do not answer lay my staff on the boy's face but the child's mother said as surely as the lord lives and as you live i will not leave you so he got up and followed her gehazi went on ahead and laid the staff on the boy's face but there was no sound or response so gehazi went back to meet elisha and told him the boy has not awakened when elisha reached to the house there was the boy lying dead on his couch he went in shut the door on the two of them and prayed to the lord then he got on the bed and lay on the boy mouth to mouth eyes to eyes hands to hands as he stretched himself out on him, the boy's body grew warm. Elisha turned away and walked back and forth in the room, and then got on the bed and stretched out on him once more. The boy sneezed seven times and opened his eyes. Elisha summoned Gehazi and said, Call the Shunammite. And he did. When she came, he said, Take your son. She came in, fell at his feet, and bowed to the ground. Then she took her son and went out. New Testament NIV version Acts 21 verse 1 to 26. On to Jerusalem. After we had torn ourselves away from them, we put to sea and sailed straight to Kos. The next day we went to Rhodes and from there to Patara. We found a ship crossing over to Phoenicia, went on board and set sail. After sighting Cyprus and passing to the south of it, we sailed on to Syria. We landed at Tyre, where our ship was to unload its cargo. We sought out the disciples there and stayed with them seven days. Through the Spirit, we urged Paul not to go on to Jerusalem. When it was time to leave, we left and continued on our way. All of them, including wives and children, accompanied us out of the city, and there on the beach, we knelt to pray. After saying goodbye to each other, we went abroad the ship and they returned home. We continued our voyage from Tar and landed at Puto Limais, where we greeted the brothers and sisters and stayed with them for a day. Leaving the next day, we reached Caesarea.
and stayed at the house of Philip the evangelist, one of the seven. He had four unmarried daughters who prophesied. After we had been there a number of days, a prophet named Agabus came down from Judea. Coming over to us, he took Paul's belt, tied his own hands and feet with it, and said, The Holy Spirit says, In this way, the Jewish leaders in Jerusalem will bind the owner of this belt and will hand him over to the Gentiles. When we heard this, we and the people there pleaded with Paul not to go up to Jerusalem. Then Paul answered, Why are you weeping and breaking my heart? I am ready not only to be bound but also to die in Jerusalem for the name of the Lord Jesus. When he would not be dissuaded, we gave up and said, The Lord's will be done. After this, we started on our way up to Jerusalem. Some of the disciples from Caesarea accompanied us and brought us to the home of Nasson, where we were to stay. He was a man from Cyprus and one of the early disciples. Paul's arrival at Jerusalem. When we arrived at Jerusalem, the brothers and sisters received us warmly. The next day, Paul and the rest of us went to see James and all the elders were present. Paul greeted them and reported in detail what God had done among the Gentiles through his ministry. When they heard this, they praised God. Then they said to Paul, You see, brother, how many thousands of Jews have believed, and all of them are zealous for the law. They have been informed that you teach all the Jews who live among the Gentiles to turn away from Moses, telling them not to circumcise their children or live according to our customs. What shall we do? They will certainly hear that you have come. So do what we tell you. There are four men with us who have made a vow. Take this men, join in their purification rites and pay their expenses so that they can have their heads shaved. Then everyone will know there is no truth in these reports about you, but that you yourself are living in obedience to the law. As for the Gentile believers, we have written to them our decision that they should abstain from food sacrifice to idols, from blood, from the meat of strangled animals, and from sexual immorality. The next day, Paul took the men and purified himself along with them. Then he went to the temple to give notice of the date when the days of purification would end and the offering would be made for each of them. Psalms and Proverbs, Psalm 78, verse 56 to 72. But they put God to the test and rebelled against the Most High. They did not keep his statutes like their ancestors. They were disloyal and faithless, as unreliable as a faulty bull. They angered him with their high places. They aroused his jealousy with their idols. When God heard them, he was furious. He rejected Israel completely. He abandoned the tabernacle of Shiloh, the tent he had set up among humans. He sent the ark of his might into captivity, his splendor into the hands of the enemy. He gave his people over to the sword. He was furious with his inheritance. Fire consumed their young men, and their young women had no wedding songs. Their priests were put to the sword, and their widows could not weep. Then the Lord awoke as from sleep, as a warrior wakes from the stupor of wine. He beat back his enemies, he put them to everlasting shame. Then he rejected the tents of Joseph, he did not choose the tribe of Ephraim, but he chose the tribe of Judah, Mount Zion, which he loved. He built his sanctuary like the heights, like the earth that he established forever. He chose David his servant and took him from the sheep pens. From tending the sheep, he brought him to the shepherd of his people Jacob of Israel, his inheritance, and David shepherded them with integrity of heart. With skillful hands, he led them. Amen. Lessons learned from Second Kings 3. Importance of seeking God's guidance. King, Jero King Jehoram, despite not following the ways of God entirely, recognizes the importance of seeking prophetic insight through Elisha before going to battle. This highlights the necessity of seeking divine direction in all endeavors, especially significant ones. God's provision through unlikely means. The miraculous provision of water for the allied armies in the desert 
just as Elisha prophesied on this cause that God can provide in unexpected and miraculous ways. Lessons learned from 2 Kings 4, 1-37 Provision for the needy The story of the widow's oil demonstrates God's concern for individual needs and his ability to provide miraculously. This teaches reliance on God for provision and the power of faith in action. Life-giving power of God The stories of the Shunammite woman's son being brought back to life and the purification of the deadly stew reveal the life-giving power of God through his prophet Elijah. Elisha. Rather. It shows that God is a master over life and death and can reverse hopeless situations. Lessons learned from Acts 21 verse 1 to 26. Courage and obedience in the face of prophecy. Paul's journey to Jerusalem, despite being warned by prophetic voices about the hardship that awaits him, illustrates his commitment to God's will and his readiness to suffer for Christ's name. Cultural Sensitivity in Ministry Paul's decision to participate in purification rites shows his respect and sensitivity to Jewish customs and cultural practices aimed at building bridges and maintaining peace within the diverse Christian community. Lessons learned from Psalm 78 verse 56 to 72. Consequences of Rebellion Against God The psalm recounts the repeated rebellion and testing of God by Israel despite his miracles. This teaches that disobedience to God can lead to severe consequences, including loss of blessings. God's faithful leadership. Despite Israel's failings, God chooses David to shepherd his people, highlighting God's grace and his plan to lead his people through a king after his own heart. This section emphasizes the contrast between, a, between human failure and divine fulfillment faithfulness, and the importance of godly leadership. These passages collectively teach about the importance of divine guidance, the reality of God's miraculous provision, the necessity of cultural sensitivity and unity in ministry, and the steadfast nature of God's care and leadership, even in the face of human shortcomings. Faith Declarations from 2 Kings 3 and 2 Kings 4, 1 to 37. I declare that I will seek God's guidance in every situation, trusting that he will provide solutions even in seemingly impossible circumstances. I believe in God's miraculous provision and his concern for my needs. Whether they are large or small, I confess that God is a master of my life capable of reversing any situation, including those that seem final or hopeless. I am committed to relying on his power and provision, expecting his miraculous touch in my life. Faith Declaration from Acts 21, 1-26 I affirm my commitment to God's will for my life, even if it leads me into hardship or suffering. I trust that any trials I face are within his sovereign plan and for the ultimate good of his kingdom. I will approach my ministry with cultural sensitivity and respect for the traditions of others aiming to build bridges and promote unity within the body of Christ. I am prepared to make personal sacrifices to maintain peace and further the gospel. Faith Declarations from Psalm 78, verse 56 to 72. I confess that despite my feelings, God remains faithful and just. I commit to remembering the lessons of the past, learning from the mistakes of those who walked before me. I will strive to be a faithful steward of the responsibilities God has given me. Following the example of David, a man after God's own heart, I believe that God has chosen me for a purpose and I will lead with integrity and devotion, 
shepherding those in my care with God's wisdom and compassion. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Please, if you were blessed by the scriptures and you will like to make Jesus your personal Lord and Savior, kindly repeat this prayer after me, believing in your heart every single word you say. Lord Jesus, I confess my sins and I ask for your forgiveness. Please come into my heart as my Lord and Savior. Take complete control of my life and help me to walk in your footsteps daily by the power of the Holy Spirit. Thank you, Lord, for saving me and for answering my prayer. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Congratulations if you said this prayer. We are so excited to welcome you into God's family. Kindly go ahead right now. Send us an email. Let us know you gave your heart to Christ. Someone is going to reach out to you and pray with you and help you in your new walk of faith. The email address is salvationinchrist101 at gmail.com. That is salvationinchrist101 at gmail.com. God bless you. Please remember to subscribe to my YouTube channel, follow me on Facebook, on Instagram, and on TikTok at Sandra Boyo Areleva. Thank you so much for being here again today. It's always a blessing having you here. I look forward to another amazing day with you tomorrow. Have a blessed day today. I love you. Bye.